Welcome to Synthesize This. In this episode, I'm going to be using the Carpal Strong algorithm again. But this time, I'm going to be making some tweaks because I got some suggestions from you guys on some things that can be improved. Um, so I wanted to show that and share that information with the rest of you. So make sure to watch the original Carpal Strong Synthesize This episode to understand the foundation of this patch because here I'm just going to be skipping through and making the corrections that were suggested. Let's get started. So let's recreate the patch real quick. So we go to global, scroll down to 34 and hit right now to initialize a basic patch. So if you remember, we just had white noise as the first oscillator. We're going to bring the level all the way down and we're going to use the fourth envelope to bring the noise up and down. So again, I'm going to pick oscillator one level, crank the amount all the way up and create a shape that just has a little bit of decay with everything else really low. And then what we did is we engaged the delay here. I'll lower the time all the way down, amount all the way up and feedback all the way up. And this is the basic sound we had before. And if you remember, I set a modulation to assign the note number to delay one time so that we can change the pitch of the sound with the keyboard. And if you remember one of the drawbacks of this patch I mentioned was that you basically have inverted pitch because we're increasing the period as we go up, which is the reciprocal of the frequency. So the frequency went down as we went up the keyboard. But user slam gauge, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, in Reddit suggested a way that we can actually get tracking going in the right direction. And that's simply by inverting the modulation amount. So he suggested we set minus 123 for the amount, and then we set the delay time to 75. So now at least we have pitch going up as you move along the keyboard. But again, it doesn't actually track the notes. So thanks to Slam Gauge for that tip. And now you can alter your patch in this way. And another user on YouTube this time with the name of Daniel Anselmi, I hope I'm pronouncing that right again. Sorry if I butchered that. Suggested that we use this feedback control here because it actually provides a delay that is tuned with the tuning knob here. So by default, it actually tracks the keyboard properly and this tune allows you to set the bass frequency. So regardless of how you set this thing, it'll still always track the keyboard. And you can use this to set a negative feedback for the signal chain, which is basically what we have here, except here you'll have tuned delay. So in order to use that, I'm basically gonna just get rid of this delay completely. And now we're back to white noise. And now I'm just gonna set maximum negative feedback here. And what do you know, it tracks perfectly. I found the tone of the sound is slightly different. I, I managed to achieve a little more dulcimer-like and kind of high frequency string sounds with the delay here. And with this feedback here, it's more of a, I guess like a guitar type sound. But at least it tracks uh, perfectly musically, so that's a huge plus. And it's tuning here. Allows you to change the bass frequency as mentioned. And then we can tune the shape of our noise amp envelope to get different tones. And of course we can bring up distortion like before. And 
you get this almost like a bass through a really strong fuzz pedal. And it's actually a really unique tone and it's really kind of shockingly simple because if I remove this feedback, all we basically have is a tiny little burst of noise and nothing else. And just by applying feedback, you get almost a bass guitar. So thank you so much, Daniel, for that tip. This is a really fantastic sounding patch and probably the simplest thing you can create. Tiny bit of noise, turn one knob, and you've got a full-on bass sound. So that's awesome. And that also frees up our delay, so we can use a delay as an effect. And since it tracks perfectly, we can actually add other oscillators as well, even the sub octave. increase some of the hack. We can bring in other oscillators as well. Again, we just started with this. It's really quite amazing. I've been using negative feedback here, but you can also use positive feedback, which you get a completely different tone. Another tool we can engage is a bit of filter. So see what that sounds like. Bit of resonance. And set an envelope on the filter. Try the high pass filter. Bring in some of the character section. And of course, we can engage the sequencer. Thank you. 
So that's basically a thanks again to Daniel on YouTube and Slime Gauge on Reddit for those awesome suggestions. I definitely learned a lot. So this is why I love making these videos is to receive feedback like that and to start a conversation about synthesis so that we can all learn. And if you haven't watched the original Carplus Strong episode, I'll link that up. Make sure you watch that first to get a little more context on what I was talking about here, which was more of an addition to that episode. Hey guys, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and share it with your friends. Also, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with future videos like this one. I'll see you guys later.